Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our Royal Belling conversation for November. My name's Anna. This is Alison. We are part of the Pro Dog team. And if you're a dog owner who'd like to feel better informed to take a healthier and more natural approach to your dog's health and happiness, then you are in exactly the right place. And if you suspect that your dog is carrying a few extra pounds, then you are definitely listening to the right live for today because we are going to be talking all about weight management and specifically weight loss for dogs. So for those of you who are watching back, as always, please feel free to add your comments and questions because we do always monitor the page and we will we will always get back to you. And again, as always, if you would like some specific nutritional feeding advice, you can contact us via our email address, which is customer-services at prodoglaw.com, or you can just direct message us via Messenger on Facebook as well. I can see there are some people joining now, so good morning to you. My name's Anna. This is Alison. We are part of the ProDog team, and this is the Raw Belling Conversation for November. So if you suspect that your dog has tipped the scales from um, cuddly to chubby, perhaps they're mm -hmm. carrying a little bit uh, more weight than you would like to see on them, and you would like to uh, learn some tips really on how to help your dog uh, lose a little bit of, of weight, then you are in exactly the, the right place for yep. today. So we're going to be talking about the importance of, of weight management. We're going to be sharing a method to help you determine whether your dog is is overweight or not and then we're going to be sharing our five steps uh, to weight loss as well and we do also have a really um, special announcement at the end as well so anybody who is really committed to helping their dog lose weight then we have an announcement at the end uh, for something which could really help you uh, move forward with that and it's something that's going to be happening in the new year so we shall we'll give you an update on that at the end uh, but as always hit the like button and let us know that you're with us drop us a comment let us know where where in the world you are you are watching from and i think that's that's all so we'll just we'll just get into it then yep yeah, just just uh, if the door goes, I will mute because, as I say, postman is always due around about this time. So, yes. uh, so yeah, this yes. is this is the joys of having dogs when you're doing lives. <laughs> I know, I know. So, Alison, what what's the why is weight management so important for dogs? Well, it's like humans. Obviously, the more overweight and further up the scale and obese you get, the much more increase in health issues um, that you're going to get. So diabetes, joint issues, obviously keeping your dog lean when they've got joint issues is really important. The heavier they are, the, the more stressed they are on the joints. Um, heart disease is, is obviously increases the, the bigger the weight. Um, and yeah, as I say, even up to things like cancer, really, um, because you know, the, the more overweight they are, the less sort of lively and energetic, um, mm. you know, for exercise wise, which helps clear lymph, lymph sort of stress and all sorts when they're out. So yeah, keeping your dog lean just has so much more benefits. And, and some of the studies actually show that um, you will lose around on average two years of, of potential your dog's life by being quite, quite overweight. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so we all like to think that we'll uh, our dogs are going to live forever, but you know, two years is is a long time if we can, you know, improve that and and get them get them sort of as, as long as life as possible. Yeah, and helping them to live that best life, helping yeah, them to have the energy and vitality they need to just go and be dogs. And, and do yeah, that. and be comfortable. That's yeah. that's the thing is you know as comfortable yeah. as possible. So how? Because one of the things that can be tricky for people, and I know even for me. With my own dog, I, and I've said to you, I'm I'm borderline whether he is carrying a little bit too ex too much extra weight or not. Um, so how can people? I mean, yeah, we, we've had this conversation, haven't we, for the last couple of days, including yeah. one of mine. I mean, I've got three. Um, 
breeds differ. So, you know, you're going to get your really sort of thin, slender, whippet type greyhounds, which have obviously a different physique than maybe, you know, a staffy or a, a bulldog. So you can't really quite compare those exactly the same, but um, they should all still have a waist, a, a definitive waist that you can see quite easily. Um, and, you know, things like the breed with thick coats, like, you know, like you've got thick coated with Rudy, all of mine are thick coated because the, the poodle crosses. So I think sometimes I can think one of mine actually looks bigger than she is, um, but a lot of that is thick coat. So it is, it's, it's sort of knowing your breed, um, knowing the physique of that breed, but obviously being able to, to determine um, whether they are slightly overweight. I mean, severely overweight, it's normally quite obvious, really, um, to most people. But as I say, you said it with, with Rudy, I said it with Markle because she was groomed Tuesday, so she's had all her coat off. And I've sort of said, haven't I, she's borderline. She's not as lean as, as she should be and how, you know, yeah. how I would prefer it to be. Yeah. So, yeah, so as I say, um, the breed makes a difference, the bigger, the thicker the coat. Um, so the, the way to do that is obviously to monitor the weight, but also to, to look at the shapes, which Anna, you, you're sharing a screen now, aren't you, of, of how yeah. you, you can sort of see from a side view um, and also looking from above, down, sort of over the top of them. Um, and you can sort of see the difference and the shapes that they should be. Um, I mean, generally, um, a good defined definitive waist. So as I say, with mine, mine are quite deep chested and they go up and then tucks right sort of behind behind the, the, the back leg um, is ideal, really, uh, with not too many ribs protruding out and showing and certainly the, the backbone as well if you feel on on the backbone of the hips if those are sticking out and really quite protruding then that really is a matter of them being underweight so just to say this i've, I've borrowed this image from uh, ukpetfood.org um and it's a really great um it it really um brings to life the whole body scoring, the way to body score. So that's what we're talking about now. It's this, a system called body scoring, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's, like, it's like the doggy doggy version of BMI, really, isn't it? The first one's obviously emaciated thin. And with, there's um, a local RSPCA rescue dog that's just up the road from me that we've been going and helping with some of our supplements to build up. Um, and we'll show those, we'll share those pictures um, shortly because he was, there he is. Um, he's a lovely, lovely golden doodle boy that, bless him, has been has been not very well treated and locked in a in a shed for the two years of his life. Um, and you can see then just how emaciated he was. His skin was all matted. Uh, he's got no muscle at all. And he's literally, you know, he couldn't even walk when they first got him because he had zero muscle mass at all and obviously very emaciated. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see there his, his, his hips, um, bones there really protruding out, um, as I say. Yeah. And obviously, um, yeah, he has been sort of clipped, not properly, but they were just obviously trying to get all his matted fur off him. Um, so, yeah, so that's basically a very underweight, emaciated dog. Yeah. And so, and he's actually looking for home, isn't he, Alison? He is, bless oh. him. He is. Um, yeah, he just, um, I was tempted, but I, I've just not the right timing for me. Um, but yeah, he's about three years old. Um, and he's a lovely, lovely natured boy, considering what he's been through. He really is, but he needs someone at home, really, um, most of the day to start with, at least for the first couple of months. Because he's, he's still on, yeah, he's still on six small meals a day at the minute um, because it's too too much food, obviously, um, he struggles with to digest. So if anybody uh, knows anyone who could potentially uh, consider taking him on, then please do let us know. Ideally, they... He, he needs to stay in Manchester area, is that right? Yeah, he's in the northwest area, and and the the foster that's got him for the RSPCA is feeding him. He's raw, being raw fed, and he's on our um, revive supplement and muscle plus as well to help build him back up. And thankfully, she's on a, a working farm. So the reason how we got through this was colostrum. He had fresh colostrum for the first sort of four or five days because he just couldn't keep anything down. So and then, so this was two weeks later. Yeah, that was just 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 the beginning of the week. So look how how much how well he's gone. Now, obviously, he's still underweight, but yeah. he's um you know he's 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 building his strength up, um and he's getting there. He's he's putting the weight on slowly, which is great. 
So going back to this, potentially he, he probably started off as a one and now he's probably about a, yeah, a two. He's up to two. So he's yeah. still slightly underweight, but um, yeah. better. So yeah. then we move on to ideal. So we've got an example here. It's one of yours, Alison. That's Winnie. That's the feral one. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, obviously she's she's quite deep chested. She's a poodle cross. Um, but you can see there the very defined waist that, that tucks right up behind the leg. Um, so yeah, and, and you can you, if you put your your hands on the back of her, you can't really feel um, a hip bones. She's got a layer of fat, a small layer, thin layer of fat over that, and also a ribs as well. Uh, you can feel them very easily, but not too easily, if that makes sense. As I say, she's got a thick coat as well, so it's not as visually obvious, but you know you can tell by looking at her that she's like quite a, a, a perfect weight with with good muscle definition. Um, yeah. yeah, and. Yeah, just 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 our eye class is a perfect looking dog. Yeah, and then and that's, that's, that's the uh, that's that's the one that that's Markle. Um, and that I had a clipped on Tuesday. Now she she is basically Mrs. Will eat anybody's food given the opportunity. So this is where it's it's difficult to manage food intake with her. Is I have to have my eyes on everybody else because she'll wolf hers down first, and if Winnie leaves a bit of hers and obviously Winnie's on a lot more food because she's a bigger dog. She's first in to snaffle it up, which is why she her ideal weight is about 21 kilos. And I, I whizzed her up to the vets yesterday just to check and she's just under 23 now. So for me, she's borderline. She doesn't obviously she's not overweight, but no. she's not as lean as she should be. And if you can see down down there, she's not got as in a defined waist. And if you, if you try and feel um, her ribs, you can feel them, but not like Winnie's. Uh, she has got a bit of a, a thicker layer of fat there. So, yeah, so she's on a diet, basically. <laughs> um, she only needs to lose about a kilo. Uh, that, you know, that's her ideal weight for me. Um, she's a medium-sized dog. So, so yeah, um, as I say, she's certainly not fat, but she's not as lean as she could be. So, perhaps... If we were going by the body scoring, we might we may put her somewhere between three and four, basically. As yeah. in, like she she definitely doesn't need to put on any more weight. No, she's not possibly not necessarily overweight as such, but um, it, it's as we've said, borderline. And I believe that's probably a very similar situation to my dog as well. Yeah, as I say, she's the smallest out of my three. Um, so she's on the least amount of food out of my three. And as I say, I am quite strict with treats and, and you know, and they get a lot of exercise. But the issue with her is she will eat, snaffle everybody else's if they leave any. And yeah. you know, like, that's that's what happens. And that's why she's put it on. So, yeah, I, I've just got to be on that a bit a bit better. Yeah, and that is um, that is a overweight dog. Uh, I mean, that should be pretty obvious to most people. Um, his belly sort of hangs down. Um, he's got no waist whatsoever. You cannot feel his ribs um, at all. Um, so, yeah. He's, and with him, bless him. Um, yeah, you can see from the, the above. You know, he is a pug, but he's a pug cross with a Jack Russell. So, to be honest, he hasn't got that flat a nose face. But if it gets slightly warm, he, he just really struggles. And a lot of that... Will be part breed, don't get me wrong, but a lot of that is his weight. You know, he can't manage, and he's not a particularly old dog, um, but he really struggles with with exercise and walking. Um, and as I say, it's just not good for the joints and and general health to be to be carrying that much weight. Yeah, I mean, I have to I have to lift you. Yeah. He has to be lifted into the van. He can't jump in, and it's not that high. So yeah. Um, so yeah, and obviously when you get to the obese, um, as I say, the bellies all hang down. They'll, you know, and and they, they, they struggle. They struggle with everything. They struggle to get up. They struggle, you know, um, breathing for some breeds a lot more. Um, so yeah, it's just not great to get let them get that that big. So for those people who are are thinking, I do think perhaps my dog needs to to shed a few pounds they are perhaps borderline or, you know, definitely overweight, um, then what would be, so we've got our five tips to, to weight loss. If we just run, we run through those. Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing, the first thing to do is, is if you are unsure is, is, you know, pop them to the vets. Uh, I know our vets do um, a free sort of weighing um, 
fit club i think they call it up at mine where it's the vet nurses and they'll do you know they'll, they'll help your body score if you're unsure anyway um and they'll advise whether you know they think your dog is is slightly overweight or not because i think it's the borderline where people struggle with um whether they think they are a little bit or not um so yeah and I, you know as i say there are there are sort of guidelines where you can use your hands feel over them spread obviously whether you can feel the ribs and whatnot quite easily um but as i say if you are unsure then we always say you know nip to the bets and, and get them weighed because i say she's obviously the last time she was weighed i think was after january or february when i went up so as i say her, she's yeah. gone up like a kilo and a half so that's why i know and she was perfect then so yeah um and then work out how much you actually think that they want to lose um like with her i say it's, it's only a small amount really and i um so you need to just work out really how much you feel that they should be a, as an ideal body weight generally and, and just keep monitoring it um the second thing is obviously evaluate the diet look at what you're feeding um move, removing as many sort of carbohydrates and starchy carbohydrates um if you if possible if you're adding extra things in or if your dog's on most people on here obviously will be on a raw diet but um you know things like treats biscuits um i i, I sort of quite well known around here dog walking and you know we've got plenty of lovely people that are out there with big big like win a lot biscuits that feed all the dogs on walks so you need to sort of you know stop that as well, stop that if if need be um you know, I like mine to sort of meet people and get treats off people and, and whatnot. But as I say, Markle's the first to find the the, uh, the walkers with the treats on the canal. So um, as I say, pumping her with a load of biscuits is not ideal now at the moment uh, when she's out on walk. So yeah, just portion control as well. You know, portion control, uh, weigh the dog's food, check out via our calculator um, what they should be being fed per day and then evaluate how many treats you're giving on top of that whether it's chew treats biscuits bedtime snacks or any additions that you add in um and if you do need to lose a little bit then i'd cut those out first first of all um and just or just stick to very small natural meat-based treats brilliant i'm just I'm just looking for the link to our um, raw food calculator. So this, I'm going to share this in the comments. So for anyone who does just want to use that, just to double check the amount that you're feeding your dog and whether that is um, the recommended quantity. Yeah, and there obviously there is a difference between obviously the completes and the, the pure meals, 8 to 10, 10. You know, if you're feeding 500 grams of the pure 8 to 10, 10, you will be getting slightly more um calories on that than you would with our complete generally because there's 15 percent veg in that so that's also something to take into consideration as well um so because a lot of people do add in on their 8 to 10 10 add in their own extras of uh, greens and supplements etc yeah okay so step, um, step three Exercise evaluation. I mean, obviously, the bigger the dog, um, you can't start taking a, a beast dog on a 15 mile run um, because you're going to obviously cause, well, you probably <laughs> dread to think really. But yeah, so obviously, look at the evaluation of your exercise, um, how much off lead running are they getting? And I appreciate, you know, some dogs can't necessarily be let off a lead because of either recall issues, behavioral issues, or, or other things. Um, but yeah, maybe, you know, evaluate the exercise. Are they getting enough exercise? Can you give them, you know, an extra fast paced walk um, if need be? And I know you, you use one, don't you, Anna? But there's also the secure my doggy fields type places that yeah. are secure that if you if you are struggling with your dog for off lead exercise um, because of, you know, behavioral issues or whatever, then these these fields are, are quite reasonable, most of them. And you can book them, can't you, to sort of just yeah. do a bit more extra. Yeah. yeah. And um, for me, because there, I have had some challenges with my dog around behaviour. And so, uh, like Alison just said, I do rent a secure field so they can run around off lead. And there's just no concern, no stress for anyone then. And also, I take him out on a long line uh, quite often now as well, because he and I'm lucky that I've got areas around me where he can he can run because on the long line he just moves more 
than if he's just on a shorter lead healing walking along with me so he does get to explore a bit more it's good for his his mental well-being as well because he can he can go and explore and have a good sniff around and he just gets to move more on a long line as well so i think it is it is being creative and i also do some like tug play with him which is also using quite a lot of, of physical energy when yeah. and, and, it, and that that's only needed for about 10 minutes and then he's he's worn out from that so there's there's just finding ways to be creative with just just getting them moving a little bit more but like Alison says in a safe way yeah it needs to be in a safe way as I say you need to you know if your dog's not been used to much exercise or it struggles with exercise it's got joint issues then obviously you need to consult with your vet and just see what's a safe safe way um, you know, because we find that we have dogs that have obviously just had operations or ruptured cruciates and obviously rehabilitation is, is slow. And so that in that respect, you need to ensure that, you know, you, you're reducing the food down accordingly so that they are they're not piling the weight on. Um, and, you know, there's, there's hydrotherapy, isn't there? There's swimming, there's all these things, but, yeah. you know, appreciate there's a there's a cost to that if it's not covered on your insurance but i'm sure you know vets will be able to advise on that in your local area to help to help build up and once they start building the muscle up and the the improvement it's like isn't it isn't it when not been to the gym for a couple of weeks the first class nearly kills you and then you sort of get back into it yeah so yeah yeah, someone, somebody's just put about avoiding root vegetables. Yeah, let's say I had, I had a customer that was adding sweet potato in, and again, that does turn, turn to, to sort of sugar in the body. Um, so, yeah, helping remove anything like that, any sort of, you know, high Stop. starchy vegetables Stop. and yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. And just replacing with greens. You can bulk it out with greens. Just, you know, greens are, are healthy, full of antioxidants um, and can be quite filling without adding a load of extra sort of um, calories. Yeah, brilliant. So, yeah, and I think it's, it's, it's certainly goals for the long term. You're not going to get a quick fix. It's not even healthy to get, you know, you're not going to pop, you know, drop a, a load of weight immediately. And, you you know, you've got to be reduce the food down in a, in a, in a safe and safe way. Um, you want to ensure that they're still getting all the nutrients from the food um, as opposed to just starving them, if that makes sense. So they need to be still getting good nutrition um, in the right amount and, and reduce it down slowly and safely. Otherwise, yeah. you have a dog that's going to go into starvation mode. Yeah, yeah, really important. Yeah, And slow and steady wins, as we say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, notice that's what sh she'll be like, smaller portions now, watching over that she won't pinch anybody else's food and making sure that all the well-meaning, lovely people on my walks are not giving her a load of biscuits. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, brilliant. And so, and then step five. Yeah, and I mean, you will, you will have some dogs that, no matter how strict you are with diet and how great you are with exercise, that they still really struggle to lose any weight. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you really do need to to discuss this with your vet and and maybe you know check out for thyroid issues, um, any other medical issues that could cause weight, like heart issues, cushions, those sorts of things. So. So, you know, there are those dogs that, you know, even some dogs that have been neutered quite early, um, as I say, they can really struggle with weight um, because hormones do affect weight, as we all know. So, yeah, so those are the five that we've put together. Brilliant. So we, as I said at the beginning, so we've got an announcement to make because what we are planning to do is run an online weight loss program for dogs, which will start in February. Um, and so if you are, if you're thinking that you are, you would really like to help your dog to lose weight, if you feel like you, you would like some extra help with that, then look out for, we're going to be promoting it, um, towards the end of December and throughout January, it will be an application process because we will have very limited spaces. Um, but it is a, it is a free program. Um, and it runs, like I said, throughout February, um, we'll have regular weekly Zooms and uh, Dr. Nick Thompson, for those of you who, who know him, he's the holistic vet. Um, and he's going to be helping with, with the program. It's called the Lean Dog Squad. 
Uh, and so you'll have the opportunity to get help and assistance from Dr. Nick throughout February, as well as Alison. Uh, we'll, like I said, we'll have regular uh, Zooms. We will have a webinar to kick it off to um, just provide lots of information and resources for people. And then we'll have a private Facebook group for people who are part of the Lean Dog Squad. Mm -hmm. um, and then that will run for three months in total. So to the end of April in total, um, but for March and April, it won't be a weekly thing for March and April. It'll be more just sort of to check in probably once a month. Um, but through February, it will be once, once a week, it'll be um, very regular. And like I said, you'll get that expert advice from Dr. Nick Thompson, as well as Alison as well. Um, so we're really excited about that. So we help to, we hope to be able to help uh, lots of dogs uh, drop those drop those extra pounds and get back to uh, living their best uh, life again. Um, and so, and I think that's it really. I mean, like I said, we're going to promote, we'll be promoting the Lean Dog Squad in December and January. We'll definitely obviously be sharing all the information about that and how to apply and all, everything you need to know in, in the Rebellion, in the Pro Dog Rebellion group as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's all I needed to say. I think we're going to be doing some sort of, um, mini sort of like weight loss percentage wise um incentives as well during that aren't we anna so yeah so there'll be some unique offers as well for people who are involved with that in terms of the uh of of pro dog food and yeah like i said it's a it's a free program the aim of it is we just really want to help people to understand more about how to help their dogs lose weight safely um and obviously share that message with other people around them as well so yeah because you know. we decided february didn't we because january everyone's just getting over christmas new year and and you know um just dealing with their own <laughs> their own weight increase for all those uh, christmas puddings and mince pies so so yeah it just mm -hmm. gives us plenty of time to sort of get that sorted in january ready for kickoff in uh, in february yeah and like i said i mean for those of you who don't know dr nick thompson he's essentially he's ded dedicated his career to um to helping to educate people around um natural feeding raw feeding holistic uh health he's just an absolute gold mine of information and um we're just really pleased that he's he's um collaborating with us on that yeah, because we saw there were some stats as well, weren't there? I wasn't there that there was, um, I think, 68% roughly. I think this was the States, though, to be fair, of dogs that are actually overweight, but only about 40% of people actually realised the dogs were actually overweight. And like you say, it's easy. If they're borderline, yeah. it is easy to sort of miss that, really. And we are used to seeing a lot of overweight dogs, so that sort of sometimes seems a bit of the norm. Yeah, definitely. So if you have, like I said, this, this will be open um, to anyone to apply, to be involved with. So if you do have friends or neighbours or family who you feel their dog perhaps could do with losing a little bit of weight, um, then obviously signpost them in our direction and we'll share all the, all the details with you later on in December um, so that you can get involved if you would like to. Yep. Um, we're not going to have a uh, Facebook Live in December uh, because it will fall literally uh, Christmas week. <laughs> uh, but we will be back at the beginning of January. We will be talking more about weight loss throughout uh, January as well. And I think um, next is Nick joining us. Uh, yes, on the so Facebook we'll Live doing, on the main page. Yeah, we'll be doing a live on our our main. Uh, page and Dr. Nick will be joining us for that as well to talk about uh, weight loss and to talk about the Lean Dog Squad program as well. Yeah. So we are excited for that. So thank you everyone for joining us. Yeah, thank you. And we, ho we hope to speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.